Hi, I'm Blake Hansen, and if you're watching this, then it sounds like you're considering buying a new mountain bike. Buying a new bike can be pretty complicated. There are so many options on the market, and so our hope here is to give you a guide to maybe make it less complicated. To me, it makes sense to start with where you live. What's the terrain around you? What kind of trails you're gonna be riding? Because if you start there, then we can narrow things down a lot. You may be wondering, do I need a women's specific bike if I'm a woman? The short answer is no. There are companies who make bikes specifically for women, but most companies will make bikes that are suitable for everyone. Let's start with types of bikes. If you wanna get into the nitty gritty of each specific type of bike, we do have a guide for that. But right now we're just gonna do a high level overview of the whole line. We got downhill, enduro, all mountain, cross country, and dirt jumping. Also, we can't forget about e-bikes. Let's start with the downhill bike. These hogs offer the most suspension available. Typically it's 200 mils front and rear. They are the slackest head tube angle, which just makes them feel like a monster truck. Downhill bikes are primarily for people looking to ride bike park, shuttle a bunch of laps, race downhill, or most importantly, free ride. These bikes are not made for going uphill. They're downhill bikes. They don't have dropper posts, they come with less gears, so definitely choose accordingly. Next up are enduro bikes. These puppies are still built to ride downhill very well, but they can also climb. Enduro bikes typically have between 160 to 180 millimeters of travel and looking at head tubes around 63 to 64 degrees. Enduro bike, you've had your moment. That's not a trail bike. All right, all mountain. If you're looking for a bike that climbs really well and can still descend most things pretty good, this guy's for you. While there's definitely overlap between the all mountain and the enduro, the all mountain will for sure climb better and usually does that by offering a little bit less suspension travel. These bikes typically come between 130 and 160 mils of suspension travel, and you're looking at 64 to 66 degrees of head tube angle. If you can only buy one bike, an all mountain bike is probably the right one for you. Next up is cross country bikes. These guys have one thing in mind, and it's to pedal fast. XE bikes are lightweight, they pedal extremely well, and they have minimal suspension travel. Contrary to popular belief, you don't need to wear Lycra when you pedal these hogs, but you can if you want to. XC bikes usually have around 100 to 120 millimeters of suspension travel and pretty steep head tube angles of around 68 degrees. Let's talk about dirt jumpers. Dirt jumpers are used obviously for dirt jumping, but you can also use them for pump track and slope style. Dirt jumpers typically come with no rear suspension, one brake, one speed, and 26 inch wheels. Last but certainly not least, e-bikes. These guys are in a category of their own. Evo's got a lot of class one bikes available and there's no other way to put it other than that these guys are freaking fun. There's a ton to unpack with e-bikes, but the main characteristics between analog and e-bikes are the same across the board. Fortunately for you, we made a bunch of guides to help you decide if an e-bike is right for you. So that's the basic differences between the bikes. We definitely recommend getting a bike fit after your purchase to make sure you're getting the most out of your bike. Whether you're interested in going downhill or pedaling all day, Evo's got you covered. Be sure to check out all the buyer's guides to make sure that you choose the bike that's right for you. That's enough for me. Let's go ride.